Okay, here we go. Right, um, the latest addition to the Circuit Symphony Studios are uh, the classic Roland D50 and its sort of bigger brother, the D550 module. Um, both same sound engines. Uh, the D550 is better MIDI implementation. It's got a sort of backlit screen rather than an LCD screen like on the D50. Um, <coughs> the other thing I picked up as well is a MT32, um, which is basically more or less uh, like a D50 module, um, apart from you can't save your user settings. It's eight part multi timbral. Uh, many people sort of frown upon the MT32 as. Um, sort of cheap general MIDI device, well it, it's pre-general MIDI, but it was the start of it um, and the sound engine is 90% close to the D50 than it is to anything else uh, the majority of people would say oh, the next best, best thing to a D50 is the D110 that's rubbish, absolute rubbish um, but again we'll show you some demos on that uh, at the later stage right so today is the going to demonstrate to you some patches that uh, Jean-Michel Jarre used um, on his 1988 um, album Revolutions. He didn't use the actual factory presets um, but there was a lot of extra user cards out there so there were sort of presets uh, that came from Roland officially uh, that he used. Okay and I think the most common one is this one called Machine Run. <laughs> which is the main basis for the uh, Industrial Revolutions track. Um, let's just change hands a second. Uh, the other one is from uh, The Emigrant. Co uh, well, it just basically goes like this. something like that anyway but I think you'll all recognize uh, that particular sound uh, the next one is from computer weekend which is Quite a cool one, um, directly taken from that album. And the other one is the Industrial Revolution strings, which sound a little. Uh, what else we got? Marshy Zone. Now I think this isn't. This isn't actually off the Revolutions album. This is. Uh, off his next album, uh, Waiting for Cousteau, and that uh, sort of ambient effect. And that's called Marshy Zone. This one is called uh, Gritar 2, which uh, is used for the lead of, uh, of the revolutions. bit of uh, modulation which is quite cool um, so we've got the uh, more industrial strings and again machine run again
um, a motor orchestra which again is the deep bass running through the uh, through the tracks we got another effect used um, at the beginning of London Kid um, where he played with Hank Marvin the introduction to that goes like maybe with a bit of less aftertouch try that one again yep we got that one um, and another one uh, let's see if we can find it Definitely here somewhere. Right, it's called Gotham FX. Um, this was just used on the remix to Revolutions and at, at the beginning of the Docklands uh, official video, just where the concert starts, you will hear. It's quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, if, if anybody is interested in getting a copy of all these presets, just send me a mail and I'll uh, get them off to you. Uh, obviously, I didn't create them. They're just for in the public domain. They are. A um, couple, couple of other interesting sounds on the D50. I wish I had two hands for that. I, I have got two hands, but obviously the other one's here. Um, and the audio for this is actually coming from the D550, um, which is all mini up anyway. Fantastic patch. Um. like they used to. Yeah, so I do apologise for my dodgy camera work, but I don't have a stand today. Yeah, so normally when you pick up a D50, it'll just be with the fa factory presets, which are quite, you know, they're alright, but they're overused, obviously, over the years. But uh, I've spent a few days researching on the internet. Um, oh, here I am, like, ugh. Spent a few days researching on the internet and uh, trying to get the best patches and stuff like that. And I came across all the Jean Mielgeard patches. As you can see, look at that massive poster there. Look at that. 1983, I've had that since I was 14. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I just got the best patches I possibly can, or the ones I like anyway. And it's really, really transformed the D50. Uh, let's just go for a couple of more patches. Nice lead. Or split actually. Yep, we got that patch. Really, really nice one. Oh yeah, whistles. Need I say anything about that patch? Um, sail away. There we are. I've said it. Another cool effect. And the D50 is a very, very powerful synth. Really powerful. And especially when you could pan all the partials in and out. piano sample I've ever heard in my life. 
if um, <coughs> this was 1987. Uh, what else we got going? Translate. Many people also compare the D50 to the Korg M1, which is a, I don't think it's a good comparison at all. You know, the Korg M1 is full of lush pads, um, where the D50 is absolutely full of really, really fantastic, powerful synth uh, instruments. Uh, and obviously the, fil the, the, the resonance filters it's got on the cutoffs, the aftertouch, two different machines. Well, my aftertouch has actually started to work. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to bore you anymore because I'm actually boring myself now. Um, yeah, so just thought to show you the D50, D550, and one day we'll go into the MT32. 20 quid off eBay, brilliant. Um, yeah, okay, um, and maybe we might do a little bit on the Prophecy, and the absolutely amazing VP9000. Um, I mean, we could go into the Zoom um, 1201 effects. I mean, we could spend a month doing that, but again, I think everybody's got a life. Right? Bye.